So the premise on the Ramsey show is get out of debt and stay out of debt. Because that way you have control of your life. Some stupid butt bank or car company doesn't have control of your life. And you have control of the most powerful wealth building tool that you could possibly have. And that's your income. When you give all your income to a stupid butt bank, you have no money and you have couch payments and you have cell phone payments and you have car payments and you have Sally Mae payments and payments and payments and payments and payments and you work your butt off and you get to the end of your life broke and you say, gosh, I hope the government, which is well known for its ability to handle money, will take care of me. This is not a plan, America. Instead, we teach you to actually get out of debt quit worshiping at the altar of the great FICO. And that means that it changes what you use banks for. You know what I use banks for? Checking account. That's it. Got a debit card on it. Got several of them, several banks for that matter, a lot of money in banks, but for running this business and for running our real estate properties and for running our lives and so forth. But that's basically all a bank's good for. And guess what? When you start using a bank just for that, you realize how bad banks really suck, that they're absolutely the most horrendous industry when it comes to customer service. They treat you like garbage. They treat you like a name. And so we recommend small community banks, regional banks at the most, and or credit unions. We tell you to stay away from these behemoth banks because they're going to treat you like crap, and they don't care. If you work for Bank of America, you should get a good job. If you work for Wells Fargo, you should get a good job working for a good company, not the one you're working for. They're awful. And here we go again, like the sixth time in five years or the fifth time in six years. Yep. Here we go again, George. Tell them what's happening this with good old from, Wells uh, Fargo right now. From NPR, here's the headline. Wells Fargo to pay $3.7 billion settling charges it wrongfully seized homes and cars. Billion! Wow. With billion! It's a thousand millions. 3.7 thousand million. That's got to be pretty bad. So the CFPB, Consumer I mean, Financial Protection Bureau. they didn't just accidentally Bureau. do this once. Wow. Okay. CFPB can do that. They just ordered them to pay billions in fines for this, and the Wells Fargo agreed to it, which means I'm they guilty. They did it, which means they did it. <laughs> Gosh. They would not have agreed to it if they didn't do wow. it. Wow. You don't pay $3.7 billion just to keep the CFPB happy. You go to court if you're right, but they're wrong. They did it. And the CFPB knocked them in the head. This is awesome. So here's what happened. People had their cars wrongfully repossessed by Wells Fargo, and the bank took actions that resulted in borrowers wrongfully losing their homes, according to the order from the CFPB. Other customers were wrongly uh, and improperly charged overdraft fees on their checking accounts. Yikes. Wells Fargo's rinse and repeat cycle of violating the law has harmed millions, millions of millions more than one of american families the cp cfpb director said uh re, re, i don't know how you pronounce that oh hit chopra maybe yeah. that sounds uh, right. chopra something yeah wow that's pretty wild and so Under wells the terms fargo, of the order wells fargo will pay two billion to millions of customers who were harmed and the bank will pay a 1.7 billion dollar fine this is wild and uh, it's it's weird that they're such repeat offenders. You'd think they'd learn their lesson after having to pay, which tells you how much money they are making off of you, America, if they've got just $4 billion laying around to pay fines and they just move on with their day. And they build big, big buildings downtown. You know downtown, what this is, you know what this is called at, at Wells Fargo, don't you? What's that? Tuesday. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, it's a drop in the bucket for these big banks. Just another day at the bank. And tomorrow you'll see their name on the newest stadium in your town. Going, well, how is this possible? Yeah. Because they're screwing everyone over with this kind of behavior. The bank framed the settlement as a way to move forward and reform the company's scandal ridden past. Nothing says we're doing great and not guilty like we will continue paying billions of dollars to make <laughs> ourselves look good. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Well, if you bank with Wells Fargo, now's a good time uh, to not bank with Wells Fargo. Um, one, time to look for a new bank. What was the other one? There was, it was Bank of America that actually foreclosed on a house that had no debt on it in Florida. They did that. 
So I always said, you know, we've done research, and 100 percent of the foreclosures occur on a home with a mortgage. That's actually not true. There not was that one time at Bank of America foreclosed on a house that had no mortgage on it in Florida, and boy, did they get their butt sued off Ooh. for that one. Oh God! But these guys are they're 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 like big tech, big big fintech here. Is um, you know, if you're Google, if you're Apple, you, you're larger economically than most countries. So you're somewhat insulated. If you're Wells Fargo, you're somewhat insulated. They had a thing that was it 24,000 employees. You'll have to look that old article wow. up. That's like four years ago. Uh, 24,000 employees had falsely opened accounts in the customers' names, if I remember the story correct. So these are bankers trying to hit their quota and get their sales bonuses, because that's really all a banker is now, is a bad salesman. And in order to hit their branch quotas, 24,000 different employees wow. had uh, falsely opened accounts in order to hit. I, I, I may be a little bit off on the year or whatever, but I'm not off on the idea. The concept happened. And That's one way to do it. This is That was also Wells Fargo. That's part of their scandal-ridden past. You guys. How do you survive as a, like, how do you still have customers after all this? And people still go there and sign up for an account today. Well, knowing all of this, there's a couple of ways to grow a business. One way you grow a business is you do a great job serving and you get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You do a great job at your restaurant and uh, somebody wants you to open another one and somebody wants you to open another one and uh, your sub sandwiches are good. And so then later on your Jimmy John's, right? And so you do a good job, which Jimmy John's does a good job, right? So they franchise. So you serve the customer and you get big to scale because you just keep doing the right thing a lot. The other way you can grow a business, which is the way this one was grown, is you buy up all the competitors. You take all your profits and keep buying all the competitors, and you take your stinky, horrible systems and integrate them into every bank you bought. And then you did it. And, and so what you're doing now is screwing people with scale. Mm -hmm. And that's what these guys are. They're just, um, guys, if, if it happened a couple of times, in a company the size of Wells Fargo, you would go, well, it's a, it's a huge company. Of course, they're going to have a couple of bad actors. This was millions of you that are customers. Millions of customers were harmed. How do you do that and even stay open? Well, because you people keep going over there and running your dadgum checking account because you think the little stagecoach is in your favor. They got so, that old timey little logo. Makes you I think they have integrity. I got your old timey logo. Millions. Millions. You're not going to fool me with the Oregon Trail. Those people died of dysentery, okay? <laughs> we know how that ended. George, don't bank with these people. You are officially old. No one knows what the Oregon Trail is. Oh my, I'm trying to teach the young folks out there, Dave. <sighs> Oregon Trail. I had to throw it in you there. You must have been four when that was out. Yeah, just about four. Yeah. Good memory. The computers were new. Uh, well, right. the good news is, America, you have a choice with where you bank. And yeah. I know it's a hassle to go like switch a checking account, but if it means staying away from companies like this that treat you like this, it is worth an hour or two of your time. I, don't, I just don't grasp why anyone still has an account at Wells Fargo or Bank of the America. The only thing I can think of is if you got a mortgage and it gets sold to a different lender and no, it ends I'm up I'm talking about Fargo. your accounts. Your banking is there. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And, and, you know. Do better. My car did not get repoed. I was not one of the millions. Wow. Well, it's because you own it. It's because I don't have anything to do with these idiots. <laughs>